Hey everyone, it's Miss Carlson here. We're going to take our first set of Cornell notes over chapter one, which covers the introduction to anatomy and physiology. It mostly includes a lot of terms that we are going to use throughout the year to help us describe what we're doing in our labs. So make sure you have a good notebook sheet of paper or a template that I provided on Schoology for you to take Cornell notes with. Let's go ahead and get started. One one talks about the common functions of living things. Not to be confused with the characteristics of living things, but these are somewhat related. So responsiveness is one of those functions, and it's basically the ability to respond or have a response to some sort of stimuli or change. We could also call this irritability. Growth is also a function. This could be in cell size, or for most multicellular organisms like ourselves, it would be in cell number. And what would happen to those cells over time is they would become specialized to perform a very specific job for the organism itself. Reproduction, movement, which is another one that is not a characteristic of living things, but it is a function. It could be internal or external movement that we're referring to here. And then finally, metabolism. Uh, these are very complex chemical reactions. In whatever aspect we're talking about it, it is going to provide energy to perform some task that keeps us living. 1-2 describes what anatomy is and physiology. So anatomy is structure and physiology is function. They both go hand in hand with each other to help understand both sides of this little puzzle we're going to be working on all year. Now anatomy actually means a cutting open. It's uh, referring to internal and external structures. And we also look at the physical relationships between those structures and it helps us understand why we are put together the way we are. Um, if we we're talking about gross anatomy, we're talking about the macroscopic. So that prefix there, macro, is referring to things that we can see with our visual eye. Um, microscopic then, and notice that prefix micro means we cannot see it with our eyes, so we have to look at it with some type, sort of microscope. Uh, the two types of anatomy that we're not really going to get into so much this year um, are cytology and histology that cover that mi microscopic type of anatomy. Physiology then is the performance of vital functions. The anatomical information that we're going to learn is actually going to provide the clues uh, on why things function the way they are. So that little abbreviation there means function. We are also going to look at pathology, also known as physiological pathology, um, is the effects of diseases on organs or system functions. Put these two together and basically you have our year. All right, one three talks about levels of organization. And we have to understand how things build up to make us a whole organism if we are to understand how we function and that physiological side that I talked about. So um, there is submicroscopic to macroscopic involved in levels of organization. And you, we have to realize that there is a domino effect. So if there is something happening at the cellular level, it is bound to affect the tissue level and then the organ level and then possibly the entire organ system that can have a vital effect on the organism itself. So um, in physical science and in biology, we kind of were at that chemical cellular level. Now we're going to start moving up and a bunch of cells put together give us a tissue. A bunch of tissues together give us an organ and then a bunch of organs together kind of form an organ system and then all the organ systems that we're going to be talking about will form our organism. All right, there are 11 organ systems in the body that we are going to be covering. Uh, some of them will be getting into more detail than others, but this is a list. I'm not going to uh, recite all of them. You can look them over. Each uh, unit that we go over is going to cover a particular system. Some of them will go hand in hand with each other as well. Now, uh, section five of the textbook should uh, be talking about something very familiar to you, which is homeostasis. This is the ability for our, our internal environment to remain stable. And the prefix and suffix in this term is actually going to be on our prefix suffix quiz on Thursday. So homeo means unchanging, stasis means standing. So we want to keep our body um, in a certain parameters and it depends on what we're talking about. 
so that it's not changing, it's functional, and we're kind of maintaining that perfect uh, temperature, for example, or that perfect pH. This is necessary for survival. We do call these homeostatic regulations when the body makes adjustments. And in order for those adjustments to happen, there has to be a regulator, there has to be a control center, and there has to be an effector. Uh, that regulator responds to or senses stimuli. The control center will then receive and process the messages, and the effector is what will basically respond. Okay, 1-6 gets into something that can be kind of confusing, uh, negative versus positive feedback. We're not talking like negative, bad, positive, good. Usually both of these types of feedback are something the body wants to happen. It's basically why there is a response. So um, the negative feedback loop is a corrective mechanism. Uh, so it's going to directly oppose a variation from the limits that the body wants to be at. This is referring to most of the homeostatic regulations that occur in our body. Now the positive, on the other hand, it exaggerates whatever is happening. Um, the initial stimulus is going to be reinforced, and this usually happens when there's something potentially dangerous or stressful going on, and the body needs to act quickly. Either way, failure for either one of these to happen could result in symptoms of disease, which of course could lead to uh, big problems, even death, depending on the situation. Okay, finally all the new uh, terms and vocabulary that we're going to start working on. 1-7 uh, goes into things that describe body regions, anatomical positions, uh, directions, and body sections. So uh, hopefully those labeling exercises from your packet are helping you absorb some of those, and I'm just going to briefly cover them now. Um, but prominent anatomical structures will serve as landmarks for you when we are describing um, the body. And anatomy, you will find, has its own language. So medical terminology is going to be very important here. A lot of the terminology uses Latin or Greek roots, and they're usually named after whoever discovered them or the most famous victim. Today, we've also added on a lot more common language. Um, but if you take a look at this picture here, um, there's a lot of anatomical landmarks that should be familiar to you. If you notice in the, the figure's description, it says the anatomical terms are in boldface, okay, so like nasus. Uh, the common name is next to it in plain type, which is a nose. And then the anatomical adjectives kind of referring to the body region are in parentheses. So uh, make sure you look at those carefully and kind of get familiar with them. Um, this is the anatomical position on the back hand, uh, palms facing up. And if we are on our back, that is a supine position, so our, our face is forward. Um, and if we are on our stomachs, that is the prone position. All right, now, directional references, you are going to have to be able to describe um, a tissue or an organ um, using these anatomical directional terms. So you need to become familiar with anterior versus posterior, and notice that dorsal and ventral also are synonyms of those words. Um, you have cranial moving up and caudal going down. You also have superior going up and inferior going down. And then we use proximal and distal to describe um, where something is in reference to another base. So I could say that my wrist is distal to my elbow or my shoulder is proximal to my elbow. And then of course, going across the body left or right, we have lateral versus medial. So you can see some of the terms are interchangeable. Now, and you have to be very careful because left and right refer to the subject, not the observer. So this to me would look like the left hand if it was me just looking at it, but is actually the subject's right hand. So we always talk about uh, left and right in reference to the subject. So this would be right and this would be left. Okay, sectional anatomy is referring to the different planes or the different cuts. So slices or sections are sectional planes. The traverse divides between the superior and inferior parts of the body. And that would be right here. It's also known as a cross section. 
And then you have your frontal or coronal plane and it divides anterior and posterior. So if you look here and follow the arrow, talking about that cut. And then finally, sagittal cuts left to right. So again, if you follow the arrows, you can see sagittal goes this way and it would, the visual would look like that. All right, last thing, the body cavities, uh, they protect internal organs and allow them to change shape. The ventral body cavity is the biggest and includes the most vital organ systems. We have respiratory, cardiovascular, digestive, urinary, and reproductive. Um, the subdivisions are divided by the diaphragm. It separates it into the thoracic and the abdominal pelvic cavities. You'll notice in the picture, and you can see it closer in the book, the thoracic cavity is made up of the pleural and pericardial cavities. And then you have the diaphragm right here. So then you have your abdominal pelvic cav ooh, cavity, whoops, too soon, um, which is made up of the peritoneal, the abdominal, and the pelvic. Okay, if you need any extra review, it's on page 21 through 22 in your textbook. Remember, there's little mini quizzes in your online textbook resource. You also, hopefully that hat packet is helping you out. Remember, you need to know the prefixes and suffixes at the top of page two and the key terms on page 21 for your quizzes this week. All right, I'll see you next time.